custom KPI cards, conditional formatting, spark lines, overriding date slices. We're gonna cover it all in this challenge. As you can hear, quite a lot. So let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're looking for ways to improve your Power BI skills through challenges and info videos, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Let's dive into Power BI and have a look at what we are going to build. So you see here a report page with some analytics for a Facebook marketing campaign. Now the focus point are these KPI cards that you see here for the click-through rate, the clicks to inquiry, and inquiries to purchase conversion. Now as a starting point, we have all of the other visuals except those KPI cards. So let's build them together. Let's build these custom KPI cards. Let's start with the normal card visualization. And we're going to visualize the click-through rate. So this measure is already there. I'm gonna add it to the cart. And then under formatting, we can get rid of the category label because I only want to keep the number itself. I'm also gonna get rid of the background, okay? And I'm gonna make the data label just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna choose as a text size 28. So now we have here the click-through rate. However, we don't know whether it went up or down versus the previous month. So what I wanna do is place a little icon right next to it that goes up if the click-through rate this month was higher than previous month. And a downward arrow if it went down. All right, so I'm gonna create a measure first. And let's name this one click-through rate, month over month icon. Now, first I want to have two variables, one that's gonna contain the icon for when it's positive. So we had a positive growth rate and one variable where we're gonna have the icon for when it went down. Now to return a certain symbol, you can use the unicar function. So it returns the Unicode character. Okay, and now we just have to pick a symbol. I just do a quick Google search, unicar characters, and that gives you a full overview of all of the different characters that there are. Now we could use, for example, here these geometric shapes. Uh, this 9650 for it to go up and over here the 9660 for when it goes down so i'm gonna type those over here and now as a result we can then check if the click-through rate from this month is higher than the click-through rate from previous month. Now, if it is, then we want to have the positive icon, right? And if it's not, then we're going to have the negative icon, all right? All right, so now let's finish with the return statement and return the result. Now I'm gonna simply duplicate the card that I have there and place it right next to it. And I'm just gonna replace the click-through rate with the click-through month over month icon. And also here, resize a little bit. Let's see if that works. So if I switch, for example, here from October to November, you see over here it went up. Now what is still missing here is a frame around it and a title of the KPI name. Okay, so I'm gonna insert a text box and here I'm gonna type in click-through rate. And let's put it in the middle. Let's make it a little bit bigger and bold. So now it overlaps the card visualization. So what you can do is go to view and then make sure that you see the selection pane. And then here on the right-hand side, you see all of the elements that are currently displayed on your report. And here we can, first of all, group them together. So I'm gonna hold the Shift key, select all three of them, and then click here on Group. And this is gonna be my click-through rate card. Then over here, the text box, that is basically my background and header. And I want this one to show at the bottom. And then we have over here the KPI number itself. And we have over here the icon. Okay, so let's also apply a little bit of shadow to this card and continue. Okay, so we can see over here the KPI number, we have the trends versus previous month. However, we don't know the actual number from previous month. And I would like to add that as well. So I'm gonna create another measure for this. And also here, we can name this one click-through rate, uh, month over month. 
And over here we have the comparison text. So I want to say versus and then add to this the uh, value from previous month. Okay, so I can just say I want to have click through rate previous month. This measure is already there. And then we can decide on the format. So here I want to have a percentage with one decimal. And then in the end, we can say something like uh, previous month. So also here, I'm just going to take one of the other cards and then copy it, click right next to it, and then paste it right over it. Let's resize it a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to formatting and then data label. I'm going to put the text size to 14. And instead of showing the number there, I'm going to take the comparison text and place that one on the card visual. Now I'm missing over there a space, so let's add it to our measure. Okay, so we have now the comparison text there as well. Now I would like to apply some conditional formatting to the icon and to the main KPI itself. And again, we have to write a measure for that. So let's go again to the formula bar. And over here we have, again, click through rate and then month over month and then we're going to have the conditional formatting where we want to say if the click-through rate this month is higher than the click-through rate from previous month then we want to return green and if not then we want to return red Okay, so instead of green and red, of course, you can also use hex codes if you prefer. So now that we have the measure, we can simply select the icon and then go to formatting. And then here we want to apply it to the data label itself. Open up the conditional formatting pane. And then here we can say that we want to format by a field value. Now we already created the measure. So let's select that from a list and click OK. And ta-da! It is green. So then we can do exactly the same for the number. So again, go to formatting, data label, conditional formatting, and over here, by field value, and then also here, select the conditional formatting measure. So if I switch back to the previous month, uh, October, you see downward arrow and everything shows in red. Okay, so now we are almost there. But I would also like to have a spark line in there. Now, a spark line is just there to show the trend. So not only versus previous month, but versus all of the other months. So that you have a little bit of a better idea how that KPI number compares to all of the other months. If there's an upward trend or downward trend. To create a spark line, we can make use of the normal line chart. Or we can also go for an area chart if we want to fill down the whole area underneath the line. Now here we have on the x-axis the date and we want to visualize the click-through rate. And you see we only have here one dot. And that's because of the slicer that we have at the top where we have a selection on October at the moment. Okay, so one thing I could do is select the slicer, go to format, edit interactions. And you see, then it shows me all of the months. However, it also shows the months after October and that's what I do not want to have, okay? But for the moment, let's leave it as it is and clean it up first, okay? So I'm gonna remove the title, also the titles on the y-axis and the x-axis, okay? I only want to have the area and the line itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go to formatting for that area chart. Okay, so let's remove all of the titles that we have for this area chart, okay? So I'm gonna go to formatting and then here, the x-axis, we can just turn it off. Y-axis, we can also turn it off. However, then it keeps the title. So you have to first turn it on and then scroll down a little bit and then turn off the title for that y-axis first. And now we can turn off the entire y-axis. Okay, so that only gives me the line and area itself. Then we can also get rid of the title and okay, so now it's time to turn this line chart into a spark line. So that basically means we're going to remove all of the elements except the line and the area itself. 
that you can do in the formatting. And here for the Y axis and the X axis, we can turn it off. However, then it also keeps the title on there. So first turn the title off and then turn off the X axis. And you can do the same for the Y axis. And so also here, make sure the title is turned off and then you can turn off the Y axis. Then also the header, there we also have a title. Okay, everything is turned off. Okay, so we have a spark line. However, now we need to fix our issue that it shows all of the months. Okay, and not only up to the selected month. But the problem is if I turn on the interaction, then it's only able to show me over here the selected month. So in this case, October. And when I turn off the interaction, then I do not know what the last selected month is. So to fix this, we have to first make a change in the data model and then write again a new measure. Now let's see how this is done and how we can override that date slicer selection there. Now the trick here is to create a dummy date table from which we can use the date column on the X axis for this specific visual. All right, so let's see how this is done. I'm gonna go to modeling and create a new table. Now this is gonna be our dim date table. However, now it's gonna be a dummy. And here we can simply return all of the unique values that we have in the date column from our data set, Facebook marketing, which is there to call the period column. Okay, so I'm gonna take that. You see in the data view, that just gives me these six dates because it always has just one date at the end of the month for each month. Okay, so that is one. Then I can go to my data model, take that then date dummy table, and then connect it as well to the Facebook marketing data. All right, so over here we have period on period. So here I quickly created two tables. And in the first table, you see the original date column from the normal date table. And here in the second table, we have the date column from this dummy date table. Now here you see we have all of the months and here we only have dates within the October month. That is because over here, the slicer that we are working with, there we have now a selection of October and that one is filtering the normal date table. However, for the other table, you see we have all of the months. And that is because if you look in the data model, we have filtering here dim date. Well, dim date is not filtering dim date dummy. So that enables us to show all of the months while still being able to figure out, okay, what is the last date that we have in the selected filter here? All right. But we need to write a new measure to return the result that we are looking for. Okay, so let's write this last DAX measure for today. So I'm going to call this one click through rate. And this is going to be before select date. Now, first of all, I need to know the very last date in the month that is selected in my slicer. Okay, so for this, I'm going to write a variable and I'm going to call this one slicer date. And here I can simply do a max and look for the maximum date in the date column of my normal date table. And then we want to return, let's start with the slicer date, okay, so that you can see. Now I add it to my table and you see indeed we have over here the last date of October because I have October selected. Okay, let's go back again. Okay, so now we can write a variable for the result. We're going to use a calculate function. Now, what do we want to cal calculate is the click through rate. Okay, so the normal click through rate measure that we used before. And then, first of all, I need to remove the filter on the date table. Okay, so I'm going to do that with an all function, refer to the date table. Okay, now we can put a filter in place on our dummy date table. Okay, so I'm gonna use filter function and over here we're gonna refer to the dummy date table where the date, which is in this case called period, okay, needs to be 
before or equal to the slicer date. All right, let's close the filter function and the calculate function. And then also return the result. Now, if it then also updated two percentages, you can see we are only returning the values from be, uh, October and before with the corresponding percentages. And if I switch now over here from October to November, you see it also calculates it for November. All right, so now we have the measure that we can use for that spark line. So I'm gonna go back to my report page and in the spark line, we have to replace date with the period from our dummy date table. Then for the values, we're not gonna have the normal click through measure, but the new measure that we just created. So that's the click through rate before selected date. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna switch over here, let's say to September. Well, it didn't work because we have to select the slicer and then go to format, edit interactions, and make sure that when we select over here something different for the slicer, it interacts with our spark line. All right, so now it does. You can turn off edit interactions again. And now I can take that spark line and go to formatting, turn off the background, and I'm gonna place it on top of our card visual. And then we can go here to the selection pane and make sure that we add it to the grouping of the click through rate card. So over here, this KPI, I still need to rename to comparison text. And over here, we have the spark line. And I can just drag and drop them over here to my card and place them in the order that I want them to be. So the spark line, should be just above the background and the header. And so that was the text box. Okay, so now we have to position everything a little bit better, make the spark line less high, maybe make the overall card a little bit smaller, just so that everything looks a bit nicer. Okay, so after playing around a little bit with the formatting and positioning of everything, there you go, here we have the custom KPI card, finally. Now to do this for clicks to inquiry or inquiries to purchase, well, works of course exactly the same. So I've already done it quickly for you. And there you go, this is the end result. Maybe just one more small note, and that is you also want to make sure that for the, every element that's on this KPI card, you go to format and then edit the interactions so that it doesn't interact with the other visuals when somebody clicks on it. Oh, yes, we did it. Okay, so that's how you can create custom KPI cards in Power BI. And of course, you have a lot of flexibility in what you put on there, which type of visuals. For example, for the Sparkline, I could also have chosen a column chart or any of the other charts in there as well, and just play around with it. Now, what do you think? Have you built your own custom KPI cards? Then maybe you have some insights that you wanna share in the comment section below. I hope that you took out a lot from this challenge that you can apply in your own work. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video.